Today we will explore how a Baco Eventmaster S3 frame can be controlled by an Airfly Pro from Skahoy. You can use the Airfly Pro to simulate a full broadcast production switcher on the frame on specific layers. You can set it up, you can set keys up. There's a lot of functionality here that will give you like a part of your screen management system will be like a production switcher with this solution. So we're quite excited to show you this. This has been done in collaboration with Baco. So it's a configuration that ties into a use case that I'm sure you're familiar with. The Event Master tool set is a part of the, today's demonstration. So I can first show you how this Event Master is uh, set up. We have defined an output which is a standard HD. Then we have another output here, which is a white screen. And actually that doesn't matter too much, but I think the important bit is that we have a screen destination called or labeled S-Dest3 and S-R-C-S-C-R-Dest1. So two screen destinations are in place. Uh, and we also have an aux destination. We won't use that for anything uh, actually. And, and then here we are back at the um, screen destination three and we are able to see that we also have some presets you can see a bunch of presets is uh, lined up here and we have some cues lined up here as well and um, then we have uh, layers currently there are no layers except the background layer in both cases um, for these uh, screen destinations but that will come all right so if we go over to the airfly pro uh, yeah in other words we have a a back of frame which is like fresh out of um the uh, box in a sense. Well, we have set up those screen destinations, but that's where we are starting. So here we have the Airfly Pro and uh, you can consider this like unboxed as it would just appear if you bought it and you unboxed it. So you need two things. You need to connect to the frame. You need also to select the configuration that is the curated Baco Event Master S3 config that we've made. So we'll pick this one first and you see immediately the panel actually changes a little bit. Uh, over here, it, ha it has a menu up here, but before we operate that, because it says connection and it has these uh, three lines, we will add the Baco Event Master. So I'll just search this one up, the uh, device in the list, so I'll select it, and then I will type in the IP address it's known to have on our network, and that's all it takes. Then it will quite quickly say, connect it here, and now we've pulled out state from it, you also see the Airfly Pro actually has this indicated on, on the screen right now. We can also follow that over here in the simulator. So there you see the, um, the simulator can be used to see anything on the panel uh, as we would in real life. And actually this is basically how I would like to make most of the demonstration because it's easier for me to zoom in and show you what, what is on the panel. Okay, so uh, actually the first thing that you intended to do in this case is to set up the panel. So you'll press the encoder here. So now I did it on the real panel, but you see the same thing is happening here. And if I turn the encoder, you see that I'm taking through some options. And uh, one of them is pick your screen destination. So currently it's set to screen destination three, but you see that I have basically these two options on none at all. So uh, destination number three would be fine. I need to confirm by pressing. And then as soon as I've done that, you see, I actually have a button over here that says create. Uh, I can also uh, show you that uh, here. It's, it's just blinking this little button. So if I press this, it is going to create a mix layer on screen destination three. Let's try. So I click it and then I wanna see in the event master tool set what just happened. It created this layer right here, all right? So pretty cool. Then I can create Kia layers. So if I press this one other button on the physical panel, it will create a Kia. I have now one Kia. I can also create another Kia. And if you look inside, then these would be layers, like single layers that are being created for us. So we have the mix layer here. And then on top of that, Kia layers that has been created as I'm pressing those buttons. All right, so that is how you could set up up to four Kias by creating layers, just continuously pressing this button. I want to stop here because um, you can easily imagine how that works. Then I want to go back to my menu selection here and I can navigate over to uh, units. This is at this time of writing, not 100% done yet, but this would basically be a way before you do anything like picking a screen destination, you would search on your network for available units. So it's like it will scan the network, show you units, you can pick them from this encoder and then it will connect to it. And then the, the setup, which is probably the main place to be, you can set up sources, you can set up presets, you can set up queues, you can adjust the key. And it is especially sources 
and um, presets and cues that we'll look at right now. So if I uh, navigate to here and I click, then we now, and let's just zoom out slightly, then you'll see that for our configuration, I have a number of sources here that I can uh, choose to map down on my bus uh, right here. Actually, um, if I, by the way, I can also make a complete reset. So I think I will actually do that. So, okay, now we're completely reset and um, the controller is like, has forgotten everything we've just done. Actually, it gives me a chance to show you something interesting because now if we, if, if we go back, one step here, you can see the screen destination is currently empty. So I, I would go to screen destination one and pick that. Um, and uh, now it says create again, because it forgot about the layer that it has already created. And this is on purpose, because actually if you, you see the um, layer one, two and three that we have created, they were associated with the controller before we just asked it to reset itself. But they could also be created manually by you in here for something entirely different that you wanted to do. So what is not, the case is now that if I click this one, it will create a new mix layer down here, layer seven with an A and B. So that's a, a mixer layer. And then if I press this one to create a Kia and I do it once again, we'll have additional two Kia layers right here. Even if I deselect one of these, which I can do by holding down the shift key, uh, I believe, then I should be able to delete uh, these Kias. No, maybe not. Maybe I need to just go out one section from here. Uh, let me see, I exit the menu, I go into the menu, I hold down shift, yes, there we go. Okay, so I hold down the shift key and if I delete key number two, uh, like this, you'll see it actually deleted um, one of the layers that I had here. We have now uh, layer seven, we have one called layer five and the layer called six is now gone. So if I just uh, do that and I create a new Kia, you can see that it, it now created a new layer six and it is a part of the, the layers over here. But now it's only these layers seven, five and six, which are actually being managed by the controller and the other ones are we have lost connection to them from the Airfly Pro. But this is on purpose because the idea is that the layers that we create from the Airfly Pro are the only ones that the Airfly Pro is allowed to manage in terms of being a production switcher with the cut and auto and assigning sources to the key and so on. And the other layers could be located differently on, on the screen. So very important concept actually. So uh, let's go to map sources. So if we go in here, you can see, we can basically pick one of these sources. Let's take um, camera number six. We, it's like you need to hold down the button and then you can basically assign it to any of these. So if I click here, it is now being assigned on the first button. You can see it lights up in green on the actual panel over here. And uh, I could then uh, pick the next one, just hold down this one and then assign it over there and so on. You can, you can go on like that uh, all the way through. Uh, but you can also click this one called uh, Source Auto Map. And if you do that, it's just going to map the first five sources. And the cool thing is that as you go through here, you can see with the little green indication, it shows you which um, button this source is currently mapped to, if any. And okay, the last one was not mapped to anything. Okay, let's hold down and then map it to this one. Okay. You also have multiple pages. So if you have more sources like this one, you can also hold down this and map it here if you want. So you can have like, I think four pages of sources like that. All right, sources are mapped, that's cool. We exit this one and now we can go into mapping presets. So if we map presets, we have the same situation. This is like our selecting row where we can take one of these presets. Let's just hold this button down and then you can see that up here on what we call the flex bus, you can now store this preset into this location. All right, great. So we can just hold this one down and we can map it to that one and we can go on like this to select and map and so on. Uh, on, on the physical panel, you know, it works really like boom, 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 quite quickly. And then you can use this zoom rocker here to go uh, further. So then I can now, I could even say, okay, I want this preset all the time to be on the first one. And then I can move on here, seven, eight, and so on, nine. And then I want to have a queue. So now at this point, um, we would then go, uh, because you can again have multiple pages of presets, which are being managed by this button here all the way until you get to exit. And then we go on to queues. So now we want to map queues, okay? We click the encoder to get into that and we can now hold down the, the queue button and then we can map it onto the controller. Like I hold it down, I store, and then I can go on to the next one. But now I want to go to the next page like that and put the last queue there. 
Actually, there are a function just like you saw before, Flex Auto Map. It is this button over here. And if I click this one, you'll see that it's actually auto populating the whole um, Flex bus uh, like with, a, with default. So it will take all the presets first, and then it is going to put everything else after that. Uh, presets and cues as well. It is possible to also remove mapping of sources, etc., and that happens by pr holding down shift. So if we uh, hold down shift like this, just like we could remove keys, we can also actually remove these mappings like that. And the same would be true for in, now we are currently um, just removing anything in these banks. But if I exit this and we go into source mapping here, then just likewise, if I if shift is being held down, I can also remove mappings on, on these buttons here. So that's the function of shift in this context. We uh, should be done with our configuration, basically. So we go all the way to exit and we exit this one. And now the question is, how is this operated? Well, you also see, um, yeah, we, um, we can basically pick a source for preview and for program. And just let's look at how this looks in the event master. You see preview and program here is, um, is shown and maybe I can move my web browser a little bit smaller so we can see this um, coincide. I like to look at it in this kind of view here. So that, that is uh, very useful for me, especially when we have this kind of split screen scenario. So you can, uh, yeah, you, you can see these change around if I go to the, uh, to the cut. And uh, auto, of course, will will basically swap these two around. So maybe you, you ask yourself, how can I select the source and put a layer on preview? Well, that happens by selecting your Kia. And the moment you select the Kia, it's actually putting it on preview. You can see that happens straight away right there uh, in, in the layer stack. You can even select both at the same time, but it is a, like a dual function. One thing is that you select it. And then another thing is that as you have it selected, this is also what you delegate a source to which, by the way, will actually tell you that source on preview because it is on preview as you are now having the key on preview and the source as well. So if we do this, we assign now actually we assigned the same source to both of these. So that's that might not have been your, your intention. But if I then go here and assign that one like that and then we enable both, you can see these two are now both on preview. Uh, we have, by the way, tally here. So there's tally indication on these LEDs, which can also be mapped to tally lamps if you want but the information is in the system. This is orange because it's a combination of the same source being on both preview and program. The T-bar will work to make transitions um, between these. Uh, so that's nice. And um, yeah, other than that, what is it we are having? Um, we are having these two keys enabled here. So let's just see what happens if we, um, if we do a cut. Let's see if I understand this. Maybe uh, if we uh, deselect these uh, keys and then we make a cut like this, then this is what we would expect. And then we can put this on, on preview and then we can cut it onto program, etc. We also have access to the toggle functions. So uh, and now let's see if, if I can figure this out. If I enable toggle like this one and uh, I take this key off, then we should see that this comes down here and this one gets up there, right? So uh, maybe I'm... I'm not sure I'm 100% smart on this, but that is just me, if that is the case. Uh, we also had, ah, it's swap. Yes, it is swap. That is the one. All right. Sorry about that, guys. So now we'll basically see, ah, no, that is about location. Okay. I'm confused about these, but if I go to this layer here, the, um, the, the, the mix layer, we have the, uh, let me see, the toggle function should be down here. So the little um, T that we see when the toggle is on. Ah, okay, it's there in the background. I'm sorry for being such a noob on uh, the event master, but you can see that toggle is being toggled on and off by this one, and the same is true for swap, and that is the main point that I wanted to tell you about. Uh, we can also clear this completely off um, from from preview. So that's what this clear button does. And um, yeah, and that's basically the, the functions that are involved here. Yes, um, so that is overall the idea. This is still um, the, the uh, first configuration prototype. So there might be tweaks to it. 
Uh, and just before we, I, I leave you, then I also want to show you that we have a, a, a ability to actually resize the whole layer stack here. So you can see these layers, and mind you, this would be the layers that are managed by the Airfly Pro. They can be sized by using the encoder here in a percentage, and I can also use this joystick to move them around. I think this might work a little bit better if I if I use my encoder on the on the reel, and then I can use the joystick to, to move the position of the whole layer stack around. So you can actually get away with doing an insane amount of things on the Airfly Pro, and that is the whole point that is, it's a, like a one-stop place to create your little layer stack with a mixer layer and two key layers on top, and being able to log, to, to create, uh, to mani manipulate their location on the screen, their size, uh, the sources on them, make transitions and so on. So you have a broadcast switcher workflow for just a few layers on your screen destination. And that's the whole point of this configuration. Before we wrap up, I just want to invite you to, ch to look out for another video we have made that shows you how you can get a preset and queue recall and playback from uh, rack panels. So you just have a row of buttons that basically does the same as the flex bars in the upper left corner of the Airfly Pro here. And that is being mapped onto a rack panel. So that's another solution that just falls right out of the integration we've done with the uh, Baco Event Master S3. Thanks for watching.